live? Anybody out there? All right. Kyle's here. All right. How's it sound? Giving people a minute to log on. to the Creative Vets streaming channel, wherever you're at, Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, Facebook, we're everywhere. Just want to let you guys know that we do have a ton of upcoming content. So this is our uh, website, creativevets.org slash live. So Rick did a... Uh, a stream earlier on songwriting. Garrett just did one on art, making your own art books. But we got a bunch of stuff scheduled the rest of the week, and this is where you'll always see the full schedule and also past episodes, which is really cool. So check those out. Uh, just creativevets.org. It's spelt right there, creativevets. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. <laughs> but uh, I guess it's on the stream channel right here. So check that out. Um, what I'm going to get into right now is just changing strings on an acoustic guitar. So this is something that kind of took me a while to, to, to get good at, I guess. And so I'm going to show you guys a few tricks and stuff. But um, I guess starting with the strings, like what strings do you use? And I use these elixirs. I don't know if you can. Let's see here. Elixir, NanoWeb mediums, 0.013 to 0.056. But you can really use anything you want. Like light strings, they, they all got their pros and cons. So light strings are going to be easier to play, like if you're just starting to learn. Uh, but they're also easier to break. And I used to, just my strumming technique when I first started, I would always break this G string. I don't know what it was, just the angle I'm coming down or I put pressure on it. And it would pop, and then it's like, I get a whole new pack of strings. It's like, do I change all the strings, or I just change one string? And usually I would, depending on, it, like, if I was going to play a gig or something, um, i change them all. But sometimes that just gets annoying. I've also got these uh, Martin. But I typically, I go with the Elixirs. They're a little bit more expensive. I think these are, like, 15 or 20 bucks. And uh, these Martins are probably eight to ten bucks, maybe. But it's all really just a preference. You just got to start trying stuff. Like I use the thick strings forever when I was playing live because I did not want to break a string playing live. And plus, like my your calluses kind of build up, and it's not that big of a deal. So these are what I'm going to be using these elixirs, and I just they got like a good feel to them. So. First thing I do when I'm going to change my strings is I take my capo, which 
if you guys don't know this, capos are meant to go to raise the key of a song. But if I flip it around on the, on the neck right here, so it's backwards, it acts as like a little bit of support for the neck when you're changing your strings. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes I'll put a pillow underneath. It just kind of depends how I'm feeling that day. <laughs> what, like, I usually don't change it on the table. I usually change it on like my bed or the couch so it's more supported, but obviously it's easier to, to see right now on this table. So the other tools I got here, I got a wire cutter, just the typical wire cutter. It's called a string winder and you can actually get uh it won't let me share. What do you want to share? You can you can buy these combined. Um, it's just like a string winder with a wire cutter. So just check it out. Guitar center center or just Google that and you can find it. Um, and then obviously I got a tuner. So you can use your phone if you don't have an actual tuner. Um, but I prefer this because the phone, especially like if it's noisy, it's going to pick up other stuff and it may not tune it as precisely as a tuner that you actually attach. Yes, I am in Nashville, Josh. And Creative Vets is actually a nonprofit for combat veterans where we were founded in Chicago. So we have a lot of operations in Chicago, but we actually operate mostly out of Nashville with our songwriting programs. But since we had to cancel everything due to the coronavirus, we're now doing uh, all these streams to try to bring veterans content while we can't do programs. So let's see here. I can't. <clears throat> you don't really need the tuner at this beginning stage. What I'm going to do, lay out my, uh, my strings right here. Got my other tools. Don't need that yet. So what I always do first, detune the top string as much as you want until it's super loose. And then I take out this called a bridge pin. And then you just unwrap the string. And that's one. And I don't do, I never take off all the strings at once because there's so much tension on an acoustic guitar. This is like, I want to say 100 or 200 pounds of pressure. So that can really mess up your guitar. If you take them all off at the same time, you might need to get it reset up afterwards. Um, just there's a whole bunch of things about intonation where, you know, this note down here should sound the same as this note up here if it's in perfect tune. Um, so this is my big string, 0.56. If you, if you just have them laid down, upside down, they're going to be in order. So it's super easy. Unravel it, stick it in the hole. Then I take my bridge pin and stick it in, and I'm pushing down while I'm pulling up to make sure this is tight. Super tight, because if it's loose and you start tightening up here, it'll start popping out down here. Then you gotta push it back in. So it's, it's better to get this tight at first. Is anybody out there uh, restringing a guitar with me for your first time? So I just pull it up to this tuner right here, and then I usually go back. So you want some slack. Like I got it pulled pretty tight right now, but I'm going to pull it back about a fret or fret and a half. Just what I mean, obviously, these, these frets are a little bit bigger than these frets down here. So it's, it's really just kind of a eyeball test, you know, just get in the ballpark. And then I always bend the string. So this is, so I know this is like, a fret and a half back, then I can feed this through. Sometimes it's tough. Then I pull it up. Take my winder, and you really want to know which way to wind the strings. So if I want to make this tightened, for this string, I'm going forward, I guess forward to me anyways it's to my left and I'm just gonna pull this tight right here and just start turning now the other thing I'm paying attention to 
is I want to make sure this coils downwards from the top to the bottom as it goes. So I'm pulling it and I'm making sure that the string that's already coiled is going on top and this string right here is going under. And you can start getting pretty quick at this. I've timed myself before. I think <clears throat> my fastest guitar string change is about seven minutes. But, uh, Blake, what's happening, buddy? So I just felt this pop up just a little bit, so I'm going to push that back down. And it's starting to get tighter. And I also have little grooves right here at this nut. Yes, it's called a nut. Actually, Tim Fagan did a really good job on his stream. It's an earlier one. Not sure exactly what we called it. I think it was the second one. So just go to the, the website. You can find it. Anything by... Uh, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Uh, anything by Tim Fagan is great. But he, he did a full... Uh, on, his, on the first stream he did for us, he uh, broke down the parts of a guitar. So... This right here is a nut, bridge pins, obviously string, these are tuners up here. It's kind of all you need to know for right now. So now once I get this to where it's like kind of making a sound, I'm going to look at my tuner and try to get this close to an E string. And it doesn't have to be perfect right now. I just want to get it kind of close so that basically what I'm doing is getting the tension on the guitar about what it's going to be. So I'm actually right at an E right now. Which, if you don't know, the strings we're tuning to down here, and this, uh, this PDF is actually on our Discord channel. So if you go to discordapp.com uh, and find Creative Vets, you can download this document. It's got a whole bunch of guitar chords on it, too, and we'll get to those at a, at a later stream. But So we're going E, A, D, G, B, E. So this graphic is like... If you're holding the guitar and you sat it down in your lap, that's how you're looking at these strings. And again, just let's see if I can get this. Uh... So you can see that how these strings, these coil downwards. So you don't want them like overlapping each other. You really want to pay attention to make sure that they're coiling down. I don't know if you can see that very well, but. That's, that's going to be your goal when you're stringing a guitar. So now I got this too. It's just, just flat of an E, which is fine. So now I'm going to go to the next string. I'm not going to bother with cutting this or anything yet. And again, D tune all the way down. So it's super loose. Pull it out. Well. Next string on the pile. How's everybody doing with the uh, quarantine? Thought of anything fun to do other than binge Netflix shows? Uh, there's also like a little groove um, on this bridge pin. Uh, if you can, I can do, I guess. If you have that, make sure it's facing forward and not sideways or anything, because it's going to help catch the bottom of this string in your guitar. So again, pull up, push down until it's tight. Bring it up. Measure it to the hole. Go back, you know, a fret, fret and a half or so. Bend it. Bring it through the hole. And then start bringing it up, making sure you're going, the coils are going down underneath. The main one's this first one, I think, usually. And I'm pulling pretty tight right here. Going down. Just making sure that bridge pin's not popping up. Keep 
just getting tighter. Kind of pushing up and pulling down with my hand at the same time. Now this one's an A, so I'm trying to get this as close to an A as I can without going over. And you really want to make sure you don't accidentally tune it up an entire octave because that'll make the string super tight. And if it's one of these bottom ones, it's probably going to snap it. So careful with your eyes if you do that. G sharp, A. Cool, close enough. D string now. Again, all the way down. Pop it out. I hear you, man. Going crazy. I'm going crazy, too. Can't see all this. Playing any guitar? Trying to learn from this channel. We got a we got a bunch more stuff coming up, so make sure you keep tuning in. So again, pushing down, pulling up, next string. Once you do it a couple times, it, it starts becoming more natural. But some of the biggest mistakes are people won't leave like they won't twist enough up here, and you want some string, some extra string up here, so that these strings, like since they're brand new, they're gonna have some give. And we're actually gonna go back and break in the strings a little bit, so they're gonna stretch out. So you wanna make sure you can keep tuning it up and not run out of space, otherwise you basically just ruin the string if you cut it, if you cut it too short. So back, you know, right in half, bend it. Oh, that's awesome. How you coming with it? Working, getting there? Slow, I mean, learning any uh, instrument is just, it takes a lot of patience. You just gotta stick with it, you know, make small goals, daily goals, just, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice this transition between a G and a C, or whatever it is, and just stick with it and, sooner or later i mean it probably took me probably took me three months or so before i was really like strumming and singing at the same time which isn't terrible but it's frustrating at first and then you start getting into new strum patterns and stuff and it's like it's you know it's the pat in your head rubbing your stomach kind of thing I shouldn't have let that string go. So we're good, we're still going down. So here we go, this D string. So we're gonna get it kinda close to a D. So now we go up here, they turn the opposite way. So you, like if you got them tuned right right now, you can tell. Like that's going down, that's going up. And you want to keep it that same way. So these three strings right here are coming in and going this way, this way. These three strings are coming here and going this way to the right. And some guitars are different. Electrics are all tuned. They have here. I'll just grab mine real quick. Electrics, they're all in the same, so they're all turning to the right to go up, left to go, or uh, I guess that's left. Left to go up, right to go down. And this, these are a little different too because you have to string it and you stick the string through the back here. And then it's the same. So it's, it's like you don't have to worry about the bridge pins, um, at least on these uh, Stratocasters and Telecasters. Actually, Telecasters might be different, but 
some uh, some electrics are kind of weird. How you got to tune them? How do you got, how do you got to string them? Um, some sometimes you got to cut the string exactly where you want it. Uh, but we don't got to got to get into that. We'll just stick with the acoustic for now. So here we go. We're on D. Did we we didn't change that one yet? Did we? No, we did not. <laughs> We got a hundred messages today. We did two streams before this one. Rick Beresford is a uh, Vanderbilt and Belmont songwriting teacher, and he also uh, he developed the curriculum for NSAI. If you don't know about NSAI, National Songwriters Association International. If you're wanting to get into songwriting, it's a good place to start. I think it's memberships are like 200 bucks a year, but they have a bunch of uh, workshops and stuff you can go to, and uh, just, and, and if you come to Nashville, there's actually a writer's room uh, that you can book out. So it was worth it for me when I was starting out. I haven't renewed my membership lately, but things have been busy. So again, same way with this one, except we're going the opposite way. So pull back, fret, fret and a half, whatever it is. And you can get away with pulling these smaller strings back a little bit farther because they're not going to... Like if you pull this top one back, this E string back too much, you're gonna run out of room on the on this little tuner right here. Uh, but that's not gonna happen with these bottom bottom three. So again, stick it through the hole. And then pull it tight. Make sure it's going, that's above it. This little string right here is above it. Trying to get to a D. Went too high, it's an E. D sharp, there's a D. And it's supposed to be a G. So we got E. That's well, already down to a D sharp now, but we'll come back and get to that. A. It's down to D. G. It's the B string. I was talking about the, uh, the other programs we had today. Garrett Austin, our art director in Chicago, did a uh, how to make an art book. So you can, you can go back on our website, creativevets.org slash live, and rewatch any of those. Tomorrow is going to be our kids' day. So if you got kids, make sure you tune in, and uh, we'll be doing some fun stuff. So these last two are always a little tricky just because they're tough to like get a grip on. So I always try to get like a really good grip down here with my right hand, pull it tight. 
Try to get that little, maybe bend it a little bit more. And you gotta look really close to make sure these are going spiraling down as well. Again, pulling really tight with my right hand. Still going down. Popped up, just push it back down. Now we're trying to get to a B, that's an A. So there you go. Last one. So a lot of people ask like, how often should you change your strings? And it's really just what you want your guitar to sound like. For me, I probably change my strings, I don't know, <laughs> anymore probably every two or three months. Uh, back when I was, I used to be in a band, I used to play a lot, so I would change them probably every two, three weeks. But I'm sure like Garth Brooks, he gets a new set before every show he does. Plus he has a guitar tech to do it, so he doesn't have to do this all the time. But he, You'll, you'll see your strings start to kind of decay. You'll get like grime from your fingers on them, uh, which can also build up in the fretboard. So you can kind of, as you're taking a string out, kind of get that string and then do the next string and the next string. Like, like again, I said, don't ever take all these strings out unless you're like setting up a guitar. That's just a good, good habit to get in. All right, this is the hardest one. This is the smallest. So the high E string. Pulling it really tight, got a really good grip on the, with my right hand. Probably shouldn't have pulled this one back the full fret and a half just because it's it just takes a while to wind it. Another thing you'll notice too is that these strings, if they don't bunch up at the top, they're gonna keep you're gonna keep losing tuning until you get them all the way up at the top. So we'll go over some ways to get to get through that. Hi. All right, we're done. Can't wait to play now. Here we go. Oh, that sounds amazing. Not really. So, all these things are out of tune, but first what I want to do is stretch out these strings. So what I always do is just kind of kind of wiggle them around a little bit. And your guitar will continue to probably go out of tune for, you know, another day or so. Actually, every time you walk by your guitar, you probably want to tune it, like if you're going to pick it up to play. And I'm pulling on these pretty hard, not like super hard, but just trying to get them loose. So 
Sometimes you know you can pull up and down, side to side, whatever you want to do. So at this point, I'll usually cut the top of the strings, but one thing you can do if you don't have a wire cutter, you can just loop these around. I guess I've seen people do this before. If they're on the road or something, forgot their wire cutter. Uh, you can get a cool circle. You can kind of sometimes put this string back through that hole. Maybe not. <laughs> Thought I used to do that. Maybe not, but anymore, just clip them. And I always try to get it as close as I can. So th this has, this wire cutter has two sides to it. Like this is like the, the flat side. So I use the back of that. Then after I clip it, make sure this is in screen. I always turn this down. Because if you get poked by that, it does not feel good and it will draw blood. I've had that happen many times. Some ketchup. Is that a spark? Or is that just a. Yeah, Jeremy Brock's in the house. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Jeremy and uh, Blake are both veterans that have been through Creative Vets program before. It's good to have you guys here. So now I'm gonna flip this back and now I'm gonna tune the guitar. So again, strings we're going for. E, A, so E is the bottom. This graphic again is if you're looking at your guitar and holding it in your lap. And you can get this on our Discord app. So discordapp.com, search for Creative Ets and I think there's a hashtag guitar class. You can download it. So when I'm tuning, I, I usually don't use a pick when I'm tuning. I always use my finger. Well, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Switch this camera so you can see a little bit better. Let's see if that'll work. That's upside down. I guess I could probably get rid of this main one. All right. Now we'll keep it because you can see my pretty face. All right. So this top one is the E string. And I'm always tuning. I usually let it, I hit it. And I let it register on my tuner up here. And right now it's saying D sharp. Which if you look at this, that is, I guess we should talk about flats and sharps. Flat just basically, it's this little B symbol at the bottom of that graphic. And that just means it's lower. So it's lower to half step. A flat like an E versus an E flat is a half step down. If you sharp it, that means you go up. And E's not a good example because there's not really an E sharp. I guess there isn't some weird theory stuff, but an E goes to up to an F. So say we're talking about a D. D down would be D flat. D up would be D sharp. There's just If you look at a piano, it's a lot easier to teach that. Uh, just the white keys are not flat and sharp. All the black keys are either flat or sharp. So hit the string. We're going for E right here. It's a D sharp, so I'm going up. I'm making it, and then I get it to an E. 
So kind of hit. Slight, like slight changes once you get close to it. Now if I had gone over the note, so this is like a quarter sharp right now, I don't want to just go down to it. Like I don't want to just do that, because sooner or later it could slip out and then it's going to go really flat. So I always, if I'm sharp, I go under, that was a, under, way down, and then back up. So you're always tuning up to the note. If you go over, you gotta go back down again. And that is an E. Next string is an A. G sharp. And I'm using a lot of just, you know, picking with my thumb, mute, pick with my thumb. We'll get into this in another stream sometime, but the right hand is as important or more important than the left hand when you're playing guitar. So there, just a little sharp, and there that goes. So we got E and A. Next one's a D. G. there B so again it's hit let it ring adjust let it ring adjust so now we should be pretty close what I usually do now is just strum it a little bit I can you know you can you can Stretch out the strings again. And that probably screwed everything up. So again, I'll go one more time through it. E, yep, went flat. A. And they say like the, the guitar is just never in tune with itself because you make, if you make a tiny adjustment on one string, it affects the rest of the instrument. So all the other strings go slightly out of tune. So it's one of those instruments you can never get like precisely, precisely in tune. So now I'll go back one more time with the pick, just to make sure I'm hit, hitting the strings a little bit harder now. tuner like one of the, the things you hit and it dings to a perfect I assume it's an E tuning fork that's what I'm thinking of any question yeah tuning fork any questions on any of that how to string what strings to use when to change your strings um, I mean, just like, you know, basic guitar setup that you're probably going to, I mean, if this is going to be a lifelong journey for you, kind of playing guitar, teaching kids how to play guitar, all that, um, you're going to, you're going to tune it a lot. You're going to string it a lot. A bone to help the string stay tight. Well, I think... These may be used to, these bridge pins used to be bones, or you can get certain guitars that are more expensive or something that they're actually, they are bone. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. 
it's pretty easy once you once you get it figured out but you know it's it's a hassle the first couple times especially making sure that these you know they're they're coiling downwards um, but yeah I guess uh, there's no questions that's all I have planned for tonight again you can uh, yeah buddy check out the rest of our streaming schedule here this is again creative that's dot org slash live tomorrow what do we got watercolors cityscapes with Garrett might be doing an art jam session uh, Wayne Brzezinka is going to be doing a, a class for collage that's on Thursday and then I'll be back Thursday night at 7 doing a kind of First couple guitar chords, if you, if you don't know anything about guitar but you want to learn, check that one out. I'll be answering any questions you have on that. Uh, Luke Pell is going to be doing a body weight workout Friday morning. He's down in Texas right now, so usually in Nashville, but I think he uh, decided to dip out for the quarantine. Don't blame him. There's nothing going on in Nashville right now. Everything's closed, as I'm sure it is where you are. I'd rather, you know, be on a farm somewhere. But yeah, that's uh, how you store it affect tuning. Yes, absolutely. The weather changes will, will affect it as well. So if it gets hot out, what's going to happen is it's, the strings are going to get loose. So they're going to go flat. They're going to go down. So you'll be tuning them up. Uh, and it's like hot and humid. You're going to have to adjust for that. Then you, If you bring it into air conditioning, it's going to go sharp. Or if it's in the wintertime, it's going to go sharp because everything's going to tighten up and it's going to put more pressure on the string. So you want to down tune uh, or you're going to have to down tune to get it in tune. Also, like if you take a guitar on a plane, I always detune my guitar because especially if you put it underneath, which you should never do, you should always try to carry it on, gate check it. Uh, but if, if it's like in the underbelly of the plane or it gets really cold, it's going to get super tight and it could you know crack the finish down here which is not good for it even though my guitar has tons of cracks and stuff and stuff all over the back just you know it's beat up i've had it for 15 years i think this is actually my first major guitar purchase i think it was i got it for around 12 1300 bucks as a taylor 314 ce and I, I got it just because I like the brightness of a Taylor. Some people, I feel like Martins are a little bit uh, darker sounding. But just, it just, you know, whatever feels good to you. But I mainly got it because I was going to start playing out acoustic shows. And it's got this Fishman blender system. So when you plug this in back here, it's got a mic inside and it's got a bridge pickup. So you can blend between the two, which is really cool. So you can get some cool sounds. Um, and it's also... Most of them, if you get it now, get one with a tuner in it so then you don't have to buy this extra tuner. Uh, but, you know, whatever you like. Some people don't even have pickups or anything. If you don't have a pickup and want to put it in, they can put one in for you for, I don't know, 200 bucks. Probably depends on the pickup, where you get it done at because they got to cut a hole in your guitar. But, yeah. Anything else? Otherwise, we'll see you... Uh, tomorrow. All right. Have a good one.